Good evening. Welcome to Crosswinds Church Online. My name is Lydia McDermott. Do you feel like you need to be encouraged or maybe you just really need to learn how to encourage those around you? If so, stick around for today's message. Did you watch the Olympics uh, this past season? Listen, I did. I love the Olympics. So my favorite event is the biathlon. I just love this event so much. The biathlon, in case you don't know what it is, is a winter sport that combines cross-country skiing and rifle shooting. It is treated pretty much as a race and it can go anywhere from like 15 kilometers for women up to 20 kilometers for men. Um, it's divided by distance and then there's includes shooting rounds. It is so fun to watch. I love it because I identify with it. I just love the idea of this longevity of it and everything that you have to go through. I used to be a long distance runner. But one thing caught my eye as I was watching the Olympics, there was a French racer who was skiing along, going for it, and he was in the lead and something that caught my the corner of my eye there was this man that began to run alongside him yelling at him and screaming at him with pure elation because he knew that he was in the lead and and, and it melted my heart it it stopped me in my dead in my tracks and even made me choke up because i thought man here's this guy running us alongside him for as far as he possibly could cheering on this french skier And I thought about what must the relationship be like? What was going on, you know, in the times that we're not seeing them here, that that he ran alongside him for so long, encouraging him. And then it made me begin to think about how our father runs alongside us and continues to encourage us day in and day out, despite the times that we are living in. And it reminded me of this scripture, not neglecting to meet together as is this habit of some, but encouraging one another. And all the more as you see the day drawing near. That's in Hebrews 10, 25. Listen, so often we read that scripture scripture, and we talk about gathering together and the importance of gathering together. And it is, it's so important to gather together. But we seem to forget about that second part that says that we're to come together and encourage one another as we see the day approaching. The day is approaching. We know that we can see it all around us. I mean, even Jesus said in Revelation 22, seven, bless, behold, I am coming quickly. Blessed is he who keeps the words of the prophecy of this book. Jesus said that. Jesus said that. So every day that passes on and we see the season and discern the season that we're in, the day is coming. The day is coming. And today is the day that we need to begin to encourage encourage each other. So what day is this scripture talking about? It is talking about the return of Jesus. The return of Jesus. So what is encouragement? What is exhortation? The word encouraging in the Greek is perikaleo, perikaleo. And it means to invoke, invite, to come near, or to be of good comfort. It means to come alongside and inspire one another in the truth, in the word of God. So what can encouragement do for you and me? One, encouragement softens my heart and has the potential to soften your heart. You know, Jesus didn't just walk alongside us. In fact, he sat with us. Think about it for a moment. When when you're having a hard day or when something's going wrong or you see the times that we're living in, you know, how awesome is it when somebody comes and sits with you? Maybe you're going through something really heavy and somebody comes and just sits by you. Maybe they just put their hand on on your, uh, your lap or on your shoulder and they don't even say anything. Maybe they just sit there and they just begin to and you realize at that moment that they're just identifying with you. You know, Jesus did that. Jesus did that. He sat with his disciples. He sits with you and I. He sent the Holy Spirit. You know, in Matthew 5, 1 and 2, it says this. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on the mountain. After he sat down, his disciples came to him. He opened his mouth and he began to teach. He began to teach. All the more, in Revelation 3, 21, it says this. He who overcomes, I will grant to him to sit down with me on my throne as i also have overcame and sat down with my father on his throne you know jesus sitting with us is so special you know 
and it encourages us because what it says is that despite him being the king of kings that he took off his robes he came down he died on the cross and he rose again so that one day that we could sit with him and that he's constantly with us sitting with us identifying with who we are and what we're going through isn't it a great encouragement to know that not only that is that god walks alongside us but he also sits with us Two, encouragement softens the hearts of those around us. Hebrews 3.13 says this, but exhort one another every day as long as it's called today, that none of you may be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. Encouragement is so powerful. It has the potential to lead somebody in such a way that sin will not become detrimental to their life. Did you read that? Did you just see that? It has the potential to soften somebody's heart. Encouragement, that's it. They're not empty words. How many of you believe that a bad week has the potential to harden your heart? It does. Sometimes it does. Maybe even a bad day. You know, so many things can happen in a small moment amount of time. Maybe somebody has passed away in your life. Maybe you've just lost your job. Maybe your neighbor just lost their job. You know, these things happen day in and day out. Listen, we have a powerful tool that can soften the hearts around us, don't we? Three, listen to the voice of encouragement. Remember Joshua and Caleb when they were sent out as spies along with the others? What happened? Some came back with a bad report. They talked about how the city was fortified and there were giants in the land and it was going to be too hard to take it. But Joshua and Caleb came back with a good, encouraging report. They said, the land is good. And if it will that the Lord be that we should take it, we should take it. And they believed that they could have victory. But they did say, also, don't be fearful of the people in the land. And, and have faith, have faith that God will will them to have it. Joshua and Caleb didn't bring doubt and fear. They brought an encouraging report. The children of Israel had a choice, just like we do. Either we can listen to the bad report, the encouraging report, and and enter into the blessing that God has for us. You know, oftentimes it's our own head that brings the bad report that we tend to listen to. But rather, we need to listen to the voice of encouragement of God and those around us that are encouraging us. I remember a time that I was in complete fear because I wanted to go snorkeling and my husband and I were out on the island, uh, Molokini Island there in Maui. And all these thoughts were coming to my head about how uh, I didn't, wasn't a good swimmer. Uh, I couldn't jump out into the middle of the ocean despite all these amazing sea creatures below. And, and something happened, you know, as all these thoughts were going through my mind, uh, I began to see little kids jumping off the back of this charter boat with noodles and nothing else, didn't even have life vests on. And I'm thinking to myself, can I do this? Like, should I do this? And this voice came out from way far away over at the island in an Australian accent that said, come on out, the water is great. It was this Australian marine biologist. And I said, okay, I'm gonna go for it. So I jumped out and I began to snorkel and looking down and not too long of that, not too long after that, you'll never guess what happened. The marine biologist starts going in a frenzy and everybody comes around him and he's calling out to the boat and the rest of the marine biologists and he's saying, listen, come on out, there's sharks, come on out. And I was terrified and there I was in the water with my noodle and I was just like froze and I sat there and everybody's coming around him taking pictures with their water cameras and I just thought, listen, Whatever is gonna happen is gonna happen. And I just decided, put your head in the water and see what what it's all about. And as I put my head in the water and I looked down, deep, dark, because I was further away from the boat, a shark was coming right for me. And I was terrified. I just said, you know what, God, whatever happens is gonna happen. And the shark came up to me and it swam below me and it went right past me. And I looked back as I snorkeled and it just went into the deep, dark, blue ocean. I'll tell you what, that was one of the greatest days of my life when that happened. It was exhilarating. All that to say that if I wouldn't have listened to the voice of encouragement uh, of, of those around me saying, it's great, the water is great, come on out. It might be scary, don't doubt, just come on out. There's great, amazing things for you to see. For me, that was such a blessing. It was such a blessing. Encouragement isn't just empty words. In conclusion, 
It can be the catalyst we need to do great things for God despite the times we're living in. We must listen to our Father, show encouragement by taking the time to sit with others and take powerful steps that impact the lives around us. Amen? Right now, I would love to give you the opportunity to be encouraged by accepting Jesus into your heart. Would you do this for me? If you like the spirit is if you feel like the spirit is speaking to you, would you just put your hand right here on your heart if you're able? If not, just do a quick little blink. There's something about that when you just begin to put a faith action to what you're about to do. And pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I confess I'm a sinner. I ask you to come into my life and forgive me of my sins. I believe you died for me and I believe you rose again. And with your help, I will live for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, I'm so thrilled. If you prayed that prayer, would you just click in the link in the description below? Wherever you are, at any point that you watch this, just click that link and somebody's going to get back to you. If this sermon has touched you, make sure to share the message on your social media. Let's spread the good news of God. And be sure to support our Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube pages by liking or following us. We are so thankful for those of you that have been giving to Ukraine. Uh, we're just so thrilled. Listen, if you haven't given to the people of Ukraine, do please do so now. We have an amazing organization that we are partnering partnering with called Convoy of Hope, and their boots are literally on the ground helping the people. Um, there's so many different ways to give. You can give online by going to crosswindsnv.org and just clicking that give button, or you can even use text to give by texting the amount you'd like to give to 84321. Um, you can download the Secure Give app and give that way, or hey, you can give in service. And if you're not able to make it here in service, you can give just by sending something directly to the mail. You can send it to 2100 El Rancho Drive, Sparks, Nevada, 89431. I trust that you guys are going to be great givers. Hi, everyone, and welcome to tonight's study. We're going to be looking at the topic of pickled pig's feet or one more night. Did he just say what I think he said? Am I in the right place? Pickled pig's feet? How does this apply to my life? This Bible stuff is so confusing. Okay, but what? Hmm, what would Jesus do? How do they get the pig to put his feet in the pickle juice? Surprise, everyone. It's me, Pastor David, the Connect Groups pastor here at Crosswinds. I just wanted to tell you about another Connect Group that we have going here at the church. This group is called Wednesday Night Bible Study and Prayer. We take a few moments in worship, we spend some time in prayer, and then we dive deeper into Sunday's sermon. Join us on Wednesday nights at 7 o'clock p.m. in room 5 here at Crosswinds. You can sign up through the QR code or by going to crosswindsnv.org and clicking on groups. Looking forward to seeing you there. If you'd like to be a part of that study, just go ahead and click on the link in the description below. Again, it's going to be Wednesday night at 7 p.m. with Pastor Dave Schmidt. As always, let's declare God's truth over our lives. I am blessed. I have divine favor. I am not alone. I am a child of God. I am more than a conqueror. I put my trust in the Lord. I walk in the promises of God's holy word because he has a miracle for me. And remember, Crosswinds, we are better together. God bless you.